Right, so I think we're recording now, yeah. So uh, this video is kind of a part two because I did a quick tribute video to Chadwick Boseman this morning, but I was by myself, so I thought I'd do a follow-up with, with you, and uh, we'll get into this a little bit. So we kind of started talking about this in our last video. If you watch on the channel, we're talking about the film Tenet, and then we kind of led into talking about Chadwick Boseman, uh, who played Black Panther. Um, some might say it's a little bit unsavoury to to just think, well, what are they going to do with the Marvel movies now when a human's life has ended? Um, that's kind of bullshit for a number of reasons. But uh, you had some thoughts on that anyway. Like what, what, you know, well, what you like I was saying, it's like, okay, but it's not like I know this person or I have any interaction with this person beyond like his films. It's not like I'm like, oh, how dare he die? Or like say anything bad about him. So it's like, well, why shouldn't we be discussing this? Like, you know. Yeah. Well, it's a pseudo moralistic kind of stance to take against, you know, people for, for saints. I mean, that's one thing. You remember when Paul, not Paul, uh, yeah, Paul Walker uh, died and it was mm. at some tribute thing straight after and fucking TMZ were getting cameras in Vin Diesel's face, like saying, you know, oh, what's going to happen with the next film? And he's just like, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just here to like pay him. He was like, it's kind of his funeral, like a public funeral, effectively. And yeah. he was like, set, and they were just sticking cameras in his face and repeatedly, even when he's saying, look, I'm just here to pay respect to my friend. But what about the next film? Uh, you know, that's different. That's not what we're doing. Like, <laughs> no point are we like um, pestering anybody who would actually have known this person. Like, we're just yeah. fans. Bullshitting, like you know, what do we think is going to happen? Exactly. But um, John Bailey sent me a, a video to um, it's an interview that Chadwick Boseman did in 2008. And for context, I believe Chadwick Boseman was diagnosed in 2016, from what I understand, and he'd been battling it for four years. Um, and this video interview was from 2018, so he'd been on with it for a couple of years at this point. And he was talking about how the, you know, like a lot of these superhero actors like Chris Evans and so on and Chris Pratt had um, gone to visit like terminal kids and stuff because they're their heroes, um, you know, in that, in that kind of way. And Charlie Bowser had done something similar. And he started talking about these two kids that they'd wanted to see the Black Panther movie because if you remember, his character was introduced in Captain America Civil War. Mm -hmm. These kids wanted to like live to see Black Panther and they never did. They like passed away like before the film came out. And Chadwick Boseman's telling this story, he breaks down into tears, and it's it was it was bad enough. Just just the story in and of itself is bad back in like 2018 when he was telling it. But now in context, it's like shit, he, he was going through that himself and he kind of knew that was how he was gonna go. Um and he kept it secret from what I understand. Um, I mean quite how secret, I don't know if his like managers and stuff knew, but uh Yes, yeah, so if you watch if you watch this video, I'm gonna edit it in uh, here. So I'm just gonna to have to like do something, but I'll edit this the clip in here. Um, so bear with us. Just to experience those two little boys' um, anticipation of this movie, and when I found out that they, Yeah, this is it means a lot. So yeah, I'll put the video in there anyway, so you better see what I'm talking about. It's not a long video, but uh, like I say, it kind of takes on a whole another like it's a bit sort of like it's a bit of a tearjerker, really, to be fair, because he, he, like, breaks down, and, you know, it's like, when you actually see there's, like, a different level to this that you obviously wouldn't have known before today, anyway. So, so the point is, we're talking about Black Panther. He knows how, sort of, important this thing is. I mean, he was talking about kids, but to, like, fans, his work, you know, this kind of thing, this is how... It, is. it means a lot to people, you know, this kind of thing. I mean, I'm, Marvel movies aren't my favourite, uh, movie franchise but to me it's 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 a lot of films that i have a lot of good memories you know went to see them like with different friends and stuff in different circumstances like happy memories there you know so um 
you know, it's like we know these actors aren't really the characters they play, but that's somebody's work, and we've come to appreciate it on on a number of different levels. So I don't think he would uh, have any problem with us saying, "Well, what what about his? How's his work going to continue?" Yeah. I mean, uh, basically moving on to that question, I would assume. Unless they just retire the character, which I really don't think they're going to do. Yeah. Especially given how, like, big, like, the whole, like, um, oh, it's, you know, it's a black superhero and all that, how big that was. Yeah. I wouldn't see them wanting to, like, just forget that happened, you know, like, oh, right, no more black. Yeah. I agree. I don't think that, right, Black Panther 2 is cancelled, um, but, uh, it does make me wonder, like, how many people at Marvel and Disney knew about this as a potential, you know, outcome for him, uh, if they knew anything at all. I say I've, I haven't researched it, so it could be public, like, who knew or whatever, but um, stuff like this happens, you know. Uh, but I really liked Black Panther. I can't remember what were your thoughts of the film. I was not a massive fan of um, Black Panther. I much preferred him in Civil War. In yeah. Black Panther, it felt too much like he was, I don't know, playing second fiddle to his supporting cast who were getting a lot of the screen time. Yeah. And he kind of yeah. gets beaten fair and square by um, his like enemy. Yeah. And he kind of comes back, not for any like good reason, but because of kind of a technicality, um, mm. which I wasn't a huge fan of. Yeah, that's all. I mean, it wasn't like an awful film. I didn't like hate it or anything. I was just a bit. Yeah. I I think his character could have been better. Cause like I say, he was really good in Civil War. Like. Yeah. You know, like yeah, you could see how angry he was. Now he's willing to go up yeah. against these powerful heroes to like get his revenge for his father. Yeah. But he was also smart enough to kind of piece together the plot as he went along to like, okay, the Winter Soldier is not actually my enemy. You are, and I'm bringing you in. Hmm. And like I say, you didn't really get that in his solo film, which was a shame. Yeah, it's a fair point, is that? Because in, in Civil War, he had a sort of came full circle, had a, even a kind of a redemption uh, thing to it, where obviously it was after revenge, after the Winter Soldier, like you say, and then he sees it for what it is and he overcomes that um, and then looks after him. Whereas in Black Panther, it's more like you say, mm. when he's defeated, but comes back on a technicality. Yeah, I can see it. I still, I still really like the film on a, on a number of levels. Like I said, uh, I didn't dislike it. I just those were my thoughts. It kind of brought it down a little bit in my estimation. Yeah, and the special effects were a little bit silly at points. Like they could have done better. Um, but again, that's a very mild thing. Other than that, like I said, because a few of us went to see where there, and I think me and Steve, I think, were the only ones that like really liked it. Um. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know quite how they'll do it. I mean, do you reckon that they'll have, obviously, a different character, so it's not T'Challa, um, but it, obviously Black Panther is like a mantle, isn't it? So Then again, yeah. cause I was thinking about that, because I don't know if there's ever been... I mean, like, for example, there have been times when it's not been Iron Man in the Iron Man armour, it's been somebody else. You mean and there's been times where somebody else has picked up the mantle of Captain America and kind of yeah. things like that down through the comics. I can't think if there's ever been a thing like that with um, the Black Panther, though. And it is to do with um, a, a sort of patriarchal kind of thing as well, isn't it? That, that was what made me laugh, because they were saying that this film is like pro-Black Lives Matter. It's like, have you read there? Like, you know, it's, it's very pro-fatherhood like fatherhood and, you know, masculinity kind of thing that, uh, that they're dead against. And borders as well. But uh, that's what I mean. It was a uh, it was passed down from father to son, wasn't it? So unless they kind of come up with something else in there and kind of write him out, but they'd have to do it in a sort of respectful way. So I don't know how they would do that. I mean, all I've I mean, it's like I say, the main thing I was thinking along like the handing down the mantle thing would be like the whole Hank Pym Ant Man thing, where they ultimately yeah. went with like somebody else who had been yeah that character. Oh. So all the other like precedent I could really think of would be uh, Hulk, where they decided, yeah. no, we don't want to go forward with Edward Norton, so we're going to recast him. Yeah. With, um, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. So 
I don't know. I mean, they might do that, like unless they, like I say, unfortunately, I'm not a huge expert on the Black Panther, so I can't say for a fact, oh, there's no other Black Panther. They couldn't say, all right, well, the mantle's passed on to this character who was like the Black Panther, like through this issues, and, like, you know, in this era, like, say, I'm followed them enough to even know that. Yeah. Well, like I say, I just wonder if they will leave it a while and then recast. Yeah, that would be an obvious way to do it. Um, like I say, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But uh, it's a shame as well because Black Panther was one of the very few of the Marvel movies coming up that I was even going to give any kind of... Because I was thinking I'm going to just basically leave off a lot of these Marvel films, just not watch them until some later point and just have a catch up with them when, I, when an actual film that I really want to see uh, comes out. And to me, I was thinking that will be Black Panther too. Um, because there's going to be some real sort of ropey ones, I think, from from what I can gather. I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, very uh, strange kind of un un unforeseen thing uh, for me. I was because you were quite surprised, weren't you, when when I told you? Because it's like, yes, he's died. And you're like, shit. Yeah, it was like, what, shit. What really? Like, you know. Yeah. That's why I wanted to like tell you over the phone because I just thought like, I'll have a conversation with you about it. And uh, uh, I've really seen him in a lot of other stuff. Like I said, I mentioned him in a previous video, not not to do with Black Panther, but I was just saying, making a point. The last film I saw at the cinema was um, Twenty One Bridges. Um, I'm kind of doing it side to side because I don't know which side this video is going to edit itself on. But yeah, it was, that was a good film. He was really good in this. So I was saying the last video I did, um, he's got a kind of like gritty. Um, outcast cop, like Dirty Harry kind of thing, like he'll he'll do what he has to to get the job done and he always gets in trouble kind of thing. Um, and it's got a little bit of a feel of maybe some of the sort of David Ayer films, like his earlier stuff, not like yeah. not training day, but uh, some of those kind of things, you like corrupt cops and stuff. Um, I mean, that's done in a lot of films, but um, I'd say give it a watch anyway. You, I think you like this to be fair. Um, that was the last film I saw at the cinema before I went to see Tenet today. Um, so yeah, but not not for any bad reason because I didn't, you know, obviously with everything that's been going on. Because I was just thinking the last time I've had this this big of a gap from going to the cinema would have been like eighteen years ago. Because um, I remember Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton one came out. Uh, summer of I looked it up. It was like August two thousand one. Apparently, the next film I can remember watching was Blade Two, and I think that was probably like March April two thousand two. So about a seven or eight month gap there, and that was primarily because uh, Planet of the Apes would put you off going to the cinema for a while. Um, yeah, that was a very disappointing film because the trailer managed to look kind of interesting. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I'll, you know, see where this goes. This film was kind of dull. Like, why was it even made? Like, fuck. Yeah, but uh, yeah, 21 Bridges was the last one I'd been to see just before Christmas, and I'd um, not gone for a few months even before that lockdown, to be fair, because it's mm. bugger all out. Uh, but yeah, he was he was really good in that, and a lot of the other stuff he's done, Charlie Bozeman, uh, was television. Um, I haven't seen any of it. I know he's in like an episode of ER, I only know that because I looked it up. Um, that was like 2008, I think. But he's done a lot of television. He's done a few movies, stuff that I haven't seen, and it doesn't like kind of movies that I would normally watch. But I might go back and see if there's anything good that he's done because, uh, like I say, I liked him in the stuff that I have seen him in the limited stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, not much else to say anyway, unless you've got any other thoughts. Mainly, I was kind of wondering, like, if they do, like, either do away with the Black Panther 2, which seems unlikely, but if they do put it on pause for a time, which I think might be a bit more likely, yeah. I wonder what they're going to use to kind of like pick up the slack in the um, kind of release order. Because what are you saying? They're doing like a Blade film. That was, I don't think that was slated to an actual date. I think a lot of them had dates and then they sort of tagged on like, and also we're going to do like a Blade film. I can't remember the name of the actor, but I've seen him in loads of stuff. He was in, um, he was Cotton, Cotton Mouth, right? In um, Luke Cage. Mm. Um, so I, and I can totally picture that as well. Um, him being good in Blade. 
Yeah. First, I was wondering if they might bump that up so to kind of like fill the gap. Yeah. Because it made a lot of money, did Black Panther as well, didn't it? Well, especially given how much like race is in like the public eye at the moment. That was just what I was generally thinking. Like, yeah. I mean, going forwards. I mean, one thing I've always wondered about now they're bringing um, the X Men eventually into like the MCU. So it's, yeah. Um, like in the comic books, uh, Storm and T'Challa end up married. Yes. Yeah. So, like I say, I wondered if they would have eventually gone that way. Like, yeah. it's very interesting to like speculate on. Like, I say, I don't see anything disrespectful in like that speculation, you know. Not the slightest. No, I mean, like I say, I mean, any, any argument to that, the video I just edited into this pretty much knocks that out because he was very much aware of how it's not just like celebrity worship and obsession with movies um you know taking people out of the real world it's uh it's it works on a number of different levels to different people like i say i mean the way it works for me is very different it's a big part of my life not just from just sitting down watching a film i like but just like i say enjoying them with other friends and it's like i was saying this to a mate because he's very wouldn't watch any superhero movies i think he like gave light of day to Time of day, I mean, to um, Avengers movies. So oh, it was good, but it's all a lot of superhero, like drivel kind of thing. Uh, very kind of like superior about it. And it was kind of saying about how um, Martin Scorsese had said that these aren't even proper films, they're just like fairground rides. It's like, it's a fair point. And Martin Scorsese has earned it to be able to say something like that. But it is very much like that is one way of looking at it. That is not the ultimate way of looking. That's not like the ultimate truth by the big expert mind Scott says. It's a good point, but it's I only mean, one it's point. Down to to me, it's a bit elitist. It's like it there's certain films that are excellent films that I personally can't stand. But I'm not going to get up on my high horse and say, oh, well, they're not good films. They're yeah. not like quality filmmaking. It's like comparing apples. Come to on, them. man. Really easy is comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like I say, that's that's the, the point. I, I was making a point to a friend of mine. I was like saying, well, the thing is, like, it's not just about the actual movies themselves. A lot of people, um, it, it means a lot to them on different levels. Like some some people have kids. They'll have their own kids and they'll watch their kids grow up. Like somebody who had a kid that was like, say, five when Iron Man came out in 2008 well that kid will be like what um 17 now so they'll have grown up with that kid and the franchise has kind of grown as well with it so the kid mm. will have come to see all those movies at different ages and stuff and stuck with it and it'll, it means a lot to people in that sense you know so it's, it's i don't think it's enough to show it's fairground rides and it's drivel and it's you know this and that it's like I say, it's, a, it's a point i can totally agree with it but it's it's just one way of looking at it I mean, honestly, it's something that I'd like to do a separate video on because I have quite a few thoughts of it that it would be getting massively off topic here. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would like to say just to finish this off is as much as I defend like us talking about it, like anybody who's like sending um, like tweets to like people who knew him or like, you know, whinging on like really loudly on social media and stuff or pestering people at funerals like TMZ did. You know, yeah. that is where you've gone into the other side of it, and that's, like, yeah. bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, yeah we'll leave it. Like, I think we've put the world, the world to rights here anyway. So, um, yeah, well, I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much all, all we can say. So uh, we'll try and do some more videos. If you, if you want to talk a little bit more about this kind of thing, we can do that on a follow-up video, I suppose. Um. But yeah, we'll, we'll leave there for now. We'll try to get some more videos out in the near future as well. And obviously, we'll be doing our Halloween season in uh, the end of October as well. In fact, I'll edit a video in the end of this, uh, our sort of announcement trailer for that. But, but it's not Halloween yet. Why, why, why are you advertising so soon? I don't understand. It'll be here before we know it. Right, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll cut you short there anyway. So yeah, everybody can follow us on Instagram, um, YouTube, and Facebook. But uh that's all, so thank you very much for watching.
Hi guys, currently in production, we are proud to announce that this year we are going to be doing the 8th annual Halloween BXR special. It's been pretty much a tradition on the channel ever since we began back in 2013, that every October leading up to Halloween night itself we do a video, or a series of videos, uh, usually it is the latter, talking about our favourite scary movies and other moments in pop culture history. You can go back on the channel and check out our previous ones. I'm going to set up a playlist in the playlists section for our Halloween series. This year, obviously, we're going to be continuing that tradition. I'm going to get myself my co-review of the core involved in this. It's currently in production, as I say, and uh, there may even be some tofu jokes thrown into. <laughs>